Hey everybody, this is Jake again with the Center for Academic Achievement. Uh, today, this will be another video in the E110 series, and we're going to talk about the method from writing analytically. I think this will be an important one for you guys, and a really useful one, because the method, along with some other tools um, from writing analytically, is going to arm you guys with the ability to ask the right questions of the text and the materials that are presented to you, and do something interesting with them eventually arriving at an academic argument. I find a lot of students struggle with, um, so your professors will be giving you, um, they might be text, they might be literature or nonfiction writing, they could be print materials or video advertisements or music videos or films, and they're going to ask you to do something interesting with them and come up with academic arguments. And a lot of students go, you know, what should I literally be doing to get there? And that's what we're going to talk about today, the actual steps um, to get you from uh, just viewing or reading materials to um, writing and talking about them in interesting ways that arrive in academic arguments. So if you've been reading writing analytically, you know that um, the method is a series of questions, but it's in the context of five analytical moves. So number one is suspend judgment, two, define significant parts, three, make the implicit explicit, or look for patterns of repetition and contrast, that's the method. And five, keep reformulating questions and explanations. So there are several steps we're gonna go through here, and the method I think is probably the most important one to get you to the academic argument that you wanna to get to. But first we'll talk about the first two steps. And the first step, suspend judgment, it's really a frame of mind that we wanna get into. It's not so much that we're doing something, it's how we want to be thinking as we go through this process. And a lot of students see materials and their first thought is, is it good or bad? Or do I like it or do I not like it? And that's really what we wanna avoid, those sort of value judgments. Our goal here isn't to determine whether or not we like something, but really even how we feel about something. The goal is just to understand it on its own terms. What is it trying to do? What do the creators intend? Um, how is it working on its audience? So we want to understand the materials, not determine if they're good or bad, or if we like them or dislike them. We're just trying to understand. So when you define significant parts, you want to first start looking at what is coming up to you as important. So you want to ask of a piece, you're looking at a text, you're looking at an image or a video, what do I notice? What is strange? What's interesting? What's revealing? What's surprising to me? And you want to rank these things in order of importance, okay? So you want to try to come up with what are, are the things that I'm noticing, and what, of those things that I'm noticing, what are probably the most important parts of this piece? And before moving on, it's worth trying to find three things that struck you as being very important. So you want to try to stay in this descriptive stage where you're just thinking and talking about the piece, the text, or an image, or a video, until you can say three things that seem important about it. So that was steps one and two. Step three, we're going to start moving on to so what, and we're going to return to this a lot, okay? You want to be asking yourself, yourself so what many, many times, okay? Up until now, we've been talking about descriptions and observations. Now we want to start thinking about what are the implications and conclusions, so what? So you're seeing these things about a piece, why do those um, observations matter? And this is hard, right? A lot of students don't want to be wrong. They don't want to draw conclusions or implications because they're afraid they've missed the point or they're going to say something that's incorrect. So we want to try to get, get over that, okay? There's not a ton of wrong answers here. If you're observing and then seeing what these observations imply and even getting to what they might conclude about a piece, um, that's not a wrong answer, right? That's just an argument. We could disagree with it, but that's not wrong, okay? So step four, this is what we're going to spend the most time on when we get into an actual exercise. Step four is the method. So really what the method is, is you're asking of a piece, a text, image, video, what, uh, four questions, what repeats, what goes with what, what is opposed to what, and what doesn't fit, okay? 
So first, perhaps the most important for the first two, what repeats? So you're looking at a text, or you're looking at an image, or you're looking at a video. And if you're wondering like, what is something about, the things that keep coming up at the base level, that's what it's about, right? Okay, so if the same image or the same words keep coming up over and over again, then at some level, this is about those words or images, right? We might need to try to figure out what they're representing, but that's kind of what's going on. So what's repeating is what's important. What goes with what? Uh, writing in analytically calls this strands. That seems a little abstract to me. I sort of like themes. So we're gonna think about, um, when we think about what repeats, we're, we're talking about what literally repeats. So words, images, colors. When we talk about strands or themes, we're going into sort of ideas that seem to be coming up. So what goes with what? So if we see literal images repeating, we wanna start thinking about what is that evoking? What is the theme that's being drawn across this piece, okay? So maybe we see, we're reading literature and we see the sea coming up over and over again, right? Images of the sea, waves, whatever. That's what's repeating. So what's the strand? What's the theme? Well, does that represent adventure? Does it represent danger? Does it represent nature? So we want to start think, seeing other things that come up that might go with images of the sea and, and come up with sort of themes, strands that this piece might be about, that it might be evoking. So what repeats? What goes with what? And what is opposed to what? So sometimes there will be tension in a piece, right? There'll be binaries between um, things that seem to be opposed to each other. And keep in mind, sometimes a tension or a binary might be what's left out. So if we're expecting to see something in a piece and it deliberately leaves it out, maybe that's a binary or a tension. We wanna notice those. And then what doesn't fit? Are there any anomalies? So if we see what's repeating in a piece and we started to develop some strands or themes, um, is there anything that's sticking out that doesn't fit with those themes? We wanna think about those things because if we don't address them, we might have holes in our argument, right? So we wanna be honest in our arguments and acknowledge what doesn't seem to be working um, with our, um, our theme. So what should you literally be doing? So this is the, basically the method that you should be working with when you're starting to break down a piece. So you wanna list exact repetitions. And when you do so, focus on substantive words or images, okay? So we wanna um, notice things that seem to be loaded with meaning, okay? So um, words like the and 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 but are going to repeat in a text, but they're not important meaning loaded words. So we don't worry about those repeating. We wanna think about important words that keep repeating. So you wanna list things that are close or related, those strands and themes that you start to see coming up. You're going to list any details that seem to be in opposition, binaries. And then finally, you want to choose something and run with it. So choose one kind of repetition, strand or binary, and make that the basis of a healthy paragraph of writing. Okay, so before you dive into a whole paper, you should be able to talk about a theme, a strand, a form of repetition in a piece that you see coming up for a good paragraph. Okay, a lot of times it's a good idea to share that paragraph with other people, to share it with your professor. And you can say, you know, is there an essay in this? Is this um, a decent idea worth writing about? And they can give you feedback, right? But so I really highly suggest writing one paragraph about what you think this piece might be about. And then of course, look for patterns um, that don't fit with what you believe is going on. You'll want to address those. And then you wanna keep reformulating questions. So even if you, after you have your paragraph, you're probably not quite to your so what yet. And you wanna keep doubling back and asking, so what, why does it matter? What else can I think about this? How do these questions lead me to other questions about this piece? So you wanna keep asking questions. That's part of being this analytical state of mind. All right, so I thought we could do this together on some eHarmony ads. And I don't believe it's actually going to let me record the audio here and record my voice. So I'm gonna turn on the closed captions and hopefully you guys will be able to see what these guys are saying. They're very short ads. So I'll also just repeat kind of what they're saying, but really it's the images that we're most concerned with. I'm gonna play this maybe a couple times and I'll play another ad and we'll start working on the method.
So the gentleman there, if you couldn't see the closed caption and said, this guy's my best friend. I'd like to find that in a partner too. That's why I trust eHarmony. And then it sort of pulls back and there's a, um, a different voice that says every 14 minutes, someone finds love on eHarmony. I'll play it one more time and just see anything that comes up, things that you notice um, as we watch this ad. All right. I'd like to play one more here. So if you couldn't see the closed captioning, he said, what a great day. It'd be even better with you. That's why I trust eHarmony. And then they had the same voiceover about finding love every 14 minutes. So I'll play it one more time. See if you notice anything about the setting, about the man, anything that seems important. All right. So I'd like to give you guys an opportunity. So if you'd like to play along here, pause the recording, the video, and um, start on the method. So what do you see repeating in this? What seems important? What are you noticing about the ads? So pause here, give that a few minutes, and then I'll continue. All right, so I had thought about this before, but these are some of the things that I notice when I start doing the method myself on this piece, and I'm looking for repetitions, right? I'm noticing, I'm focusing, I'm suspending judgment. I'm not, you know, like, oh, I think online dating is stupid. I'm not having any value judgments. I'm just trying to understand it. So what repeats? You know, the first question of the method. So to me, the structure repeats in the two pieces. They both have these three quick lines. Um, what a great day. It'd be even better with you. That's why I trust eHarmony. Um, what does the man say with the dog? This is my best friend. I'd like to find that in a partner too. That's why I trust eHarmony. There's almost sort of like a, a poetry to it, right? Um, I noticed that it's very brief, the brevity of it. Um, and there's a rhythm to it, right? I noticed that they made really solid and repeated eye contact with the camera. Um, and they alternated their eye contact between the camera and their phone. So they're looking at their phone, they're looking up at you, the viewer, back at the phone, back and forth. And then I noticed their exact speech. So they always repeated the phrase, that's why I trust eHarmony, right? So that seems important. Trust seems to be a big deal in these ads for some reason, right? So those are the things that I literally see repeating. And we're gonna move on to strands, but I wanna give you guys another chance. Let's view them real quick. All right, so we're gonna move on to strands. And remember, these are sort of the themes that we, uh, we see coming up, okay? So, again, you can take a moment and see what themes seem to be coming up for you. So what are the men doing? What are they not doing, right? What seems important in regards to repeated themes? And pause if you'd like to work on that, and then I will continue. So this is what I see going on. So there seems to be a theme of beauty. Surprise, surprise. It's a, it's a dating ad, right? So it'd be weird if the men weren't good looking. So we have that going on. Something that I noticed and seems really important in this is domesticity. So what are the men doing? Um, they're petting the family dog, hanging out in the bedroom. Um, the other gentleman is making a cup of coffee in the morning. So they're not rock climbing or um, I don't know, hunting, we're playing sports. This is very domestic, right? That seems important. 
and community seems to be um, important in this too, especially in the second ad where it pulls back and it shows the big like array, sort of like matrix of, of men's faces, right? So there seems to be community going on in this piece as well. So the next step is what is left out or what, where is the tension? And I think this is a good example of where the tension is between what's being uh, said and what's not being said or what's being represented and what's not being represented. So um, this is a dating ad. There's lots of dating ads. You can also date people out in the real world, right? So what's not being talked about in this? Where's the tension? And for me, the tension is between um, what's sort of noticeably absent. So there's no um, demonstration of really of like sex or dating in this, which is kind of weird in a dating ad, right? It's all about safety, domesticity. Um, I would argue permanence and marriage, that that's what these um, ads are really about. And they're leaving out other things that we might associate with dating, um, such as unknown, um, danger and excitement, impermanence, actual sex, right? So there's this tension between domesticity, permanent safety, versus the unknown sex and dating, I think, in this ad. So I'm going to keep thinking about these things, and if I were making an academic argument, I'd start putting it all together. So I notice these repetitions of attractive men. I notice repetitions of the phrase, that's why I trust the harmony. There's something about trust going on. Um, these men are engaged in domestic tasks, right? Um, and the camera always pulls back to show even more men, this sort of like e-harmony community or family, right? And I have thought about all those things, and so I wrote my paragraph, so I'll just share with you guys. This is what you might come up with if you're going to try to say something interesting about these eHarmony ads. The creators of the eHarmony ads understand that though times and technology are changing, meeting a mate online is still met with suspicion from some would-be consumers of this online dating service. Shopping for a date online could be impersonal, or worse, for those that seek a serious mate, could be viewed as a place to look for quick physical relationships, a part of hookup culture. As a result, this eHarmony ad seeks to grant itself a legitimacy that sets it apart from other online dating services. The men it displays are of course attractive, but they are not displayed for their sexuality. In fact, any reference to sexuality is noticeably absent. Instead, they are engaged in domestic tasks, petting a dog or making coffee in the morning. This suggests that eHarmony is for those that seek long-term domestic partnerships, even marriage. This message is broadened when the camera pulls back at the end of each ad showing a vast community of like-minded men. Though at its core, eHarmony is selling a dating service that can connect you with potential mates, this ad sells the viewer a sense of community. For female viewers, it displays a myriad of serious domestic potential mates. For men, it invites them to join in a community of attractive and charming men, all working to meet the love of their life. By doing so, it makes it okay to join eHarmony for those that are suspicious. It invites the consumer to put aside their reservations and join the eHarmony family. All right, so you wouldn't get this by only thinking about this one time, right? You're gonna keep doubling back on what do I notice? What do I notice? What are the themes? What's missing? What's absent? And you might get to something like this. Um, and this could be, you could, you could totally disagree with this, but it's not really right or wrong, right? It is a, an academic argument. It's trying to understand what the ad's doing, how it's working on um, the viewer, and um, how, how they're trying to get you to sort of like to the, the state of mind that they want to you to have after viewing this as the consumer, right? And I think if you are working with ads in any of your um, in any of your um, work doing the method, remember that with ads, um, these three questions. I think this can be really helpful as you go through the method. So what do the ad creators want me to think about them? Okay, so what do they want me as consumer to think about the company? What do the ad creators want me to think about myself, right? So sometimes they want you to think things, um, you know, what do I, what do I want, what do they want me to think about myself for not using the product? Or what do they want me to think about myself if I do go and use the product? Will this change me in some better way? And then what are they selling besides the literal product? So I argue 
in this piece, though the product is a dating service. Literally, they'll connect you um, with people you can go on dates with, right? Like that's what they're selling you. Um, but it goes deeper than that. Here they're selling a sense of community, of trust. You can trust eHarmony. It's okay to join up. Look at all these other healthy, happy people who are part of this community. You should be too. That's also what they're selling, right? So think about what are they selling besides the literal product? What sort of feelings are they selling, okay? I hope this was helpful. Again, just to review, we're gonna start by suspending judgment. We're gonna define significant parts. We're gonna make the implicit explicit. We're gonna look for patterns and we're gonna keep reformulating questions. We're always gonna push on that so what, okay? Why do my observations matter? And again, the method, these four things, you're gonna ask what repeats, what goes with what, your strains and themes, what is opposed to what, what are your binaries and tensions, what's left out, and then what doesn't fit, what anomalies are there in the piece. And you're gonna use all of that and try to write yourself one solid paragraph. And once you're there, you should be off and running to an essay, okay? Thanks for listening, I hope this was helpful, and I hope you'll have success using the method.